Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Now it's been a very, very long time since I've done a poker tutorial. And no, I'm not talking about the card game. We are talking about ACNH poker. Now, a lot of new features have been added into the program by my Shiling Star, including the Bulldozer, Map Dropper, and Dodo Helper. Today, I'm just going to go through a basic overview on how to install the new Poker Core into your PC and how to use its basic functionality. Now, I will make separate videos outlining how to use the other features such as the new Bulldozer, Map Dropper, and the Dodo Helper, but for now, we're just going to download and install and I'm just going to go over the basic features. Now, here's a new direct link to download Poker Core from the pipeline itself. It will be linked in the in the description below, so make sure that you download the latest version. Once you open up the folder, you're going to see the file acnhpokercore.exe. Go ahead and double click that to run, and you want to go ahead and click on more info if this pops up on your PC, and you want to click on run anyway. Once you do, you'll probably see a pop-up like this where it says, do you want to download the item sprites? Go ahead and click on yes. Now once you do, it does say download complete, but it says please wait patiently for the file to decompress. This might take up to several eons, another one of my Shelling Stars jokes. Um, yes, there are over 25k images, and it will restart the program when it's done. So just give it some time and it will load up poker on its own. Now as you can see, the program did restart. But for most of you guys, you might not have Net Framework installed on your computer, so it might prompt you to download that first. If that's the case, you're going to be led to this website right here. Now, if you have a Windows computer like me, and you just want to go down and go to where it says Run Desktop Apps and download the x64 version. If you're on Mac OS, just go ahead here and click on the Download x64 there. Once you download it and install it onto your computer, Poker Core should work and run. Now, just a quick sidebar, in case any of you guys watching this are complete newbies, you do need a switch with custom firmware already on it in order for this to work. If you are just a normal player, you are not going to be able to do this and live inject items into your game. And if you do have custom firmware, I do want to let you know that you guys do need the latest release of SysBotBase. I will link this in the description below. Make sure you download the zip file and that you are copying it into the root of your SD card. Once you do, you can go ahead and type in your switch IP address once you have the game loaded up and all you have to do is click on connect. Once you do, you'll see that it will read your inventory, your name, um, it will start populating some extra options such as the other features in poker. Uh, you will also see uh, a feature here on the right where it says auto. I like to turn this on because it actually um, updates in real time what's in your inventory. Like for example, if you were to drop it or if you were to pick up a new item, it will show up on the program right away. Now, there is like an annoying sound that I really don't like to hear in poker. Um, luckily, there is an option setting. So if you go ahead and click on disconnect, you'll see a gear icon on the left. Once you click on this, you can actually turn the sound off. I do prefer turning the sound off, so it's up to you guys. Um, also, if you ever have an ACNH update in the future, which at this point, I really don't think there will be any more, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you ever need to change any of these values for whatever reason, all you have to do is click on address override and click on yes, and you can manually change it from here. Once you're all done there, you can just go ahead and reconnect back to your switch and let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is on the right side, you'll see a drop down menu and it will tell you the name of your player. If you click on it, you'll also see if there are any other players on your island or their house. Um, once you selected the character that you want to be on, you can go ahead and scroll down here with every item in the game, or you can simply type it in to find the item that you are looking for. Now, for example, if I want to look for a diner chair, I will simply type it in and you will see the item pop up. Once you do, go ahead and click on it. Now, if you want to place an item in your inventory, all you have to do is simply hold down the control key and left click on your mouse. 
and you can see that you can populate it into your inventory. If you want to delete it right away, you can right click and click on delete item, or you can hold down the alt key and left click and you can easily delete it out of your inventory. Now let's say I don't want a red diner chair. You want a different variation. Well, this is really easy. All you have to do is click on variation on the bottom. Once you do, you'll see the other variations pop up. Just simply click on the color that you want and you can change it. Now let's talk about items real quick. Let's go ahead and search up Nook Mall tickets. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Nook Mall tickets and I'm gonna place one right here. Now you'll see a number here where it says three. That means I only have three Nook Mall tickets in my pockets. Now, if I want to max out the amount of Nook Mall tickets I can have, all you have to do is go into wherever it says hex value here and you can double click it and it will max it out automatically. So right now, if I click on it, it'll say 10. Now you can also change this to normal and you can see that the amount is different here. So if I was to make it one, it'll inject one Nook Mall ticket. If I want to make it the max amount, I can just double click on here and it will automatically do it for you. So you don't have to worry about memorizing how, how much is the max stack for each item. The program actually does it for you, which is really neat. The next thing I want to go over is DIY recipes. In order to do that, you will click on the recipe tab here, and then you can uh, search for the item that you want. Once you do, you'll see that there is a DIY image on the bottom right corner of the item you are trying to inject. Once you do, just go ahead and click on it, and it will inject into your pockets. Moving on, let's move over to flower. Once you do here, you'll see all the flowers populate on the right side. Just click on the one that you want and go ahead and inject it into your pockets. The next thing I want to talk about is the favorite tab. Once you click on it, you'll see that I have nothing in my favorites. Let's say there's an item that I occasionally love injecting into the game. All I have to do is right click on it and I can click on add to favorite and it will show up in this section. So if I move out of this tab, and let's say I quickly want to get to my favorite Nook Mall tickets, I can click here and I can find it and it will already be at its max stack value that I saved it at. Some other neat features that you can do is right here on the bottom right, you'll see where it says fill remain, which will fill up the remaining empty spots in your inventory as such. And let's say you want to fill all of your pockets with the same item, just click on spawn all. If you want to easily clear out your inventory, just click on clear all. Now let's go ahead and populate our inventory back with Nook Mall tickets. Now, once you do that, let's say you want to wrap one of them as a present or you want to wrap it in wrapping paper. You'll see an option here. You can choose the color that you want it to be in or if you want it in a box or a present. Uh, once you do, just go ahead and click on the item that you want and click on wrap item. And now it will say that the item was wrapped. Or you can right click and click on wrap all items and it will wrap every single item in your inventory. On the bottom, it says retain name. If you keep this clicked on, it will tell you the name of the item instead of saying present. So if you want it to be truly anonymous what you're wrapping, you can turn this off. The next tab I want to go over is the other tab. So once you go here, you'll see a couple of new options. It allows you to modify your turnip prices. It tells you the prices for each day, and it also gives you your reaction wheel here. It also tells you your weather seed, if you want to freeze or set time, uh, your stamina, if you want to eat 10 turnips, or if you want to poop them all out. You can also modify your walk speed and your animation speed in this tab. And also you can turn off uh, collision or you can um, modify your swim club mode. Now, if you want to set all your turnips to max, you can. there's already a pre-configured button here. If you click on it, it says, are you sure you want to set all the turnip prices to max? And then you click on yes, and it will make it to 999 million. Now this does allow you to do the 999 million bell glitch in Nook's Cranny if you know what I'm talking about. If you want to change it manually, you can also do that and click on set turnip price. 
Under the reaction wheel, you can pick which character you want to modify the reaction for, and then you can actually click on whatever reaction that you want to change it to and click on set reaction wheel. Now this option is really cool because if you scroll down, you'll also see that you have access to the unused NPC reactions. So feel free to check these all out and test them out in game. Next thing I want to talk about is the freeze set time option. Once you click here, you can see your current year, month and date and the current hour and minute on the island. You can mo actually modify this and click it and you'll see the changes in game right away. Um, and you can actually change the month and the date and you can set the date and time. Now, just a warning, if you do modify the time in the game, no one will be able to visit your island and vice versa, you won't be able to fly out. It will just give you a communication error or it will give the other person a communication error. So if you do change the time on your island, make sure that you restart the game if you wanna visit someone. For maximum walk speed, it actually does exactly what it says. It will speed you up depending on how fast you want to go. And same thing with animation, it actually speeds up any type of activity that you do in the game. So if, like for example, if you're placing down paths in the game, you can either speed that process up or slow it down immensely. Now. A warning for using the animation speed up, if you do end up talking to a villager or try to enter a building, it will freeze your game. And this will actually cause you to restart the game in order for it to work again. So if you're in the middle of a build or constructing something and you haven't saved the game, just be mindful and careful of the fact that you aren't bumping into any of your villagers or accidentally entering a building because that will lock you out of the game. The last thing I want to go over in this tab is the swim club mode. If you toggle this on, you will be able to swim super fast in the ocean. Now the next tab over is the critter tab. On this page, you can read the critter data for insects, river fish, sea fish, and sea creatures. Once you do, you can manually enable or disable the spawn rates for each, and it also gives you a little tidbit on when they spawn. The last tab we're gonna go over is the villagers tab. Now once you come here, poker will read your current villagers on your island and populate it on the screen. Now as you can see, I have all of mine in a move out stage because I do host a treasure island on my server. If you want to remove someone from boxes, just click on the cancel move out button. Same for when you want to put them back in boxes, all you have to do is click on a move out option and click on it. Now for treasure islands, I do recommend using the irregular move out option as the villager stays in boxes indefinitely until someone adopts them instead of leaving when the day rolls over. Now, if you want to replace a villager, you'll see a little drop down menu on the bottom left. Here you can scroll through all the villagers or you can use the search bar located next to it to quickly look them up. Now, once you pick one, click on the villager that you want to replace and click on replace villager. Additionally, there are also options on modifying friendship levels here, as well as changing the catchphrases of each individual villager that you have on your island. Finally, on the top right, you'll see a section where you can modify the villager you meet in a mystery island tour. You can replace the villager with one of your choosing and invite them to your islands this way. Now on the bottom right, you'll see some options to load and dump villager data. I don't see any reason why you need to do this, but if you do, the option is here regardless. Now, this does conclude my basic tutorial for poker. I know a lot has changed since the very first poker video I put out, and it's been almost two years. So I did want to make sure I covered most of the basic functionality in poker and how to download the latest version. Now the next couple of videos will highlight how to use the bulldozer, map dropper, regenerator, and the dodo helper. If you guys like my content, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Make sure to join my Discord server and use the support channels if you have any questions. Take care.